butternut squash lasagna. We're starting out just the way we do with a standard bolognese. I've got all my flavor bases. I've got some onions, some garlic, some fennel, which I'm gonna get diced up here. A couple of celeries. Just get these all hacked up and puree them. And we start to brown our food. Then we're gonna add a bunch of pork and brown that too. And these are gonna be in between the layers of our roasted butternut squash. Mm, good stuff. Let's give a little lubrication to our pan. Ooh, okay. My flavor bases are in the pan. Big salt, we got a big pan, we need big salt. This is how we go in the restaurant, big food. And a pinch of crushed red peppers. We're on our way, browning away. I'm gonna brown the crap out of this. All right, I've developed beautiful crud. That's just what I'm looking for. So now it's time for big meat. Yay. All right, my ground pork. It's just the way it rolls. Okay, oh, look at that. So. Some salt we got in there. And we start to crunch this all up, really to get brown meat. Again, we're gonna repeat these same ideas of really developing big brown flavor. And sort of like as flavorful as it can possibly get one step before it's burnt. Smells so good. So, brown food has developed. So I'm going to add a bunch of tomato paste. Now I have tomato paste and I'm gonna grab some canned pureed tomatoes. I'm gonna toss those in also. All of these steps in the formation of this ragu in the beginning are really important. Some wine. That makes everybody happy. So I'm stirring my tomato paste around, really stirring it to get involved. I'm gonna add a little bit of a super secret flavor weapon. Butternut squash and cinnamon go so well together. So I'm gonna throw in a couple of cinnamon sticks, thyme bundle, bay leaves, some canned pureed tomatoes. Oh yeah. I can see big flavors developing. Why? Because I can see brown food happening. So this is where we go. This is welcome to the dance. We add water and reduce, add water and reduce. So this is the dance that we have, the life cycle of the ragu. Just the way I do in the restaurant, I do in my home. It's the life cycle of our ragu. And my life cycle is doing beautiful things here right now. So we add a little water and reduce. And I'm gonna keep on doing this for, you know, another hour or so. Well, in the place of noodles, I have a butternut squash. We're all about fall flavors today or wintertime stuff. So I'm just gonna cut this guy in half straight away. And then I'm gonna cut it in, into quarters to give myself a little bit of a help here. Hey. Okay, and I'm gonna slice this thin. There we go. Nice. So look at that. That looks like a beautiful sort of lasagna kind of noodle. So just a little toss with some olive oil and salt, as I said, get them in the oven. And uh, then we're gonna be ready to have some lasagna noodles. We do a nice layer of our butternut squash in the bottom of our dish. Then we do a little layer of ragu. Notice I'm saying gluten-free, but we're not vegetarian. So we still have big hearty things happening here. I'm gonna do a few dots of ricotta cheese all over the place. We're gonna give it some creaminess. All right, a few mushrooms and some spinach. Look, we have beautiful green. Like this just is going to be a really pretty looking lasagna. That's a good thing. All right, now once I get my spinach layer in there, we're gonna give it a little parm, a little more cheese, a little more cheese factor. And then we're gonna do another layer of our noodles, our butternut squash. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna lay them in the other direction to kind of stabilize the whole issue. All right, so look at my beautiful lasagna all put together. I'm just gonna add one more layer of my gorgeous, delightful, delicious ragu. 
This kind of seals the deal. And one more sprinky dink of parm. I'm gonna wrap this in aluminum foil and then get it in the oven. So, you know, the thing about lasagna is best if you have a chance to bake it, let it cool, and then warm it up. Why? So it will do a beautiful job slicing. If you don't have that chance to do that, that's okay. It just won't slice as beautifully as if you had the time to do that. But you know what? It will still taste delicious. Why? Because we took the time to taste all of our parts to know that we're putting together a beautiful, beautiful something, something. So there we go. Look at that. Hello. I'm going to take a picture of it. You look really good. I'm going to toss this on a sheet tray just in case things bubble over so I, you know, don't have crud on the bottom of my oven. Always thinking. All right. Some foil. Now, I'm gonna put this in a preheated oven, 375 degrees. We're gonna go for about, you know, 50, 55 minutes. I'm gonna roast this for, ooh, that's a lot of lasagna. I'm gonna roast it for 45 minutes covered and then another 10 uncovered to get a little crispy and crunchy on top. There we go. I'm gonna take this middle piece, yes. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. That is lasagna. It's gluten-free, it's noodle-free, it's very seasonal, and it looks, it smells fantastic. Oh, I rocked this one out. Okay, that looks like a lasagna dinner to me, doesn't it? This is spectacular. Mmm, yeah. The butternut squash feels just like noodles, but it has just the lovely sweetness and that pork ragu with a little poke of cinnamon, the ricotta, oh, this is good stuff. 